Today's video is brought to you by Wood Defender. We have a huge backyard. So I want to say that there's very few people that pull off blue hair, but I, I feel like she's doing it well. We are going to begin to build a really cool horizontal wood fence. The first thing we needed to do before we began was to mark out the location for the fence. The plan was to tie in the wood fence to the existing block wall on the far east side of the house. We then used an oversized surveyor's measuring tape and measured from the house, the block wall in the east, and the block wall behind us to give us more or less a straight line across the property. We I'm pretty sure some surveyors would take a offense to them calling that a surveyor's tape. That's not a surveyor's tape, but it is a nice 300 foot tape. Steel stakes and mason line to mark the back edge of where the fence posts needed to line up. Dude, I like that. I never thought about putting oh, yeah. a nail in there. Oh, she's <laughs> I had never done that. That would be set in concrete every eight feet along the length. If you're unsure about what size footing you need for your fence posts, hey, some upside down marking paint would be really handy right there. An yeah. Diameter auger that came with a fence post hole digger that we could rent from our local Home Depot. So with a dimension of eight inches wide, our footing needed to be about 24 inches deep. Normally, digging a two foot deep hole using a gas powered auger isn't an overly difficult task. But in our yard, with our extremely hard packed desert soil, digging the 20 post holes that we needed became a huge job. Okay, so we're using eight inch by 24 inch deep holes. Yes, it's not a very big hole. You know, she's talking about the wind, so obviously wind happens there. I would probably recommend maybe another six inches deep and then eight inches. Okay, I'm gonna, they're using four by four posts. Let me just figure that out. Times 3.5 equals 12 and a half times two square root of 24 and a half. Math, 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 math. Yeah, so five inches only leaves you an inch and a half at the corners. So that's really pretty tight. I think personally that I would like to see a larger hole than eight inches in diameter. Yes. Just to give you a little more coverage on the corners where your weakest point is. I'm thinking you're, you should be looking at about 12 inch hole. The other thing I would say is, is a little bit more money spent and rent the dingo auger or something like that. A dingo or walk behind skid steer. Something that has more down pressure would have probably paid dividends here with this hard pack clay. Yeah, definitely, definitely useful and hard ground. I mean, that one man auger, that's a freaking bat killer right there. I'm telling you right now, it's, they're terrible. And they just don't have very aggressive teeth either. Probably could have saved a lot of time and effort and heartache by spending a little bit more money and renting a walk behind. Agreed. Eventually we got all 20 holes dug and it was time to start setting the wood post. We purchased an inexpensive concrete mixer off of Craigslist last year when we put in our front steps. Looks like they ran into the footing for the concrete Yeah, wall. they ran into the footing. I don't know what she used to anchor into that block wall there, but I would highly recommend uh, epoxy. Not a wedge anchor, not a screw anchor. Um, those fail way too easily. The screw anchors work if it's really grouted well. It's sometimes. It's sometimes. Yeah. But the thing is, is that brick soft material. Yeah. Yeah, but it just doesn't hold good. It's not high PSI stuff because it doesn't have the large aggregate. Once we set each post in the concrete, we nailed on a temporary two by two brace to make sure that the post was plumb on all four sides while the concrete cured. And we also yeah. You're thinking it too, aren't you? You don't need to brace your posts. Well, that wasn't what I was getting at. I was thinking something else. I was thinking, anybody else see it? You see it yet? Uh, Did you see it? No. I'm gonna play it again. You. Once we set each post in the Watch. concrete, we nailed- You see it? Oh, I see it. You see it? Nope. I see it. It doesn't look like any of these posts are treated. Oh, yeah. These are not these for are raw outdoor pine use. Posts. <laughs> yeah, these are raw pine posts, which, okay, here's, here's, here's the good and the bad and ugly of this. They're raw pine posts, so they're going to be kiln dried. They won't warp as bad as treated posts. But the problem is, is you're putting them in an outdoor environment and then burying them in the ground. They'll rot off crazy fast, faster than you'd ever imagine. Even in a desert. Even in the desert, not to mention... The concrete at reacts with the post as well and holds moisture there. You're going to have problems with this fence. It's not going to last near as long as it should. And because I hate treated posts because they warp so bad, we don't use any wood posts in the ground. You may have seen us in the past talk about the most expensive part of your fence is the post and putting the post in the holes. So spend the most money getting it right the first time so that you don't have to do this over again. I would recommend a steel engineered product never do wood. I think a lot of people forget that concrete and wood are not a good mixture in the ground. It's not a good mixture. We can debate this until we're blue in the face or purple in the face or whatever color you want to be. Don't do it on your fence. If you want a concrete, we agree with concrete, but use an engineered product like steel. I can't stress that enough. Definitely don't use this raw pine. This is, this is going to be a disaster in a few years. And then all your frugalness is going to bite you in the butt. 
held on a temporary two by two brace to make sure that the post was plumb on all four sides while the concrete cured. We also nailed scrap boards horizontally from post to post to help give them strength. Put your concrete in the hole, top off the hole with dirt, pack the dirt. Don't worry about the bracing. Yeah, no, no bracing necessary. And you can stab four by four posts too. Um, so you can fill your hole with concrete and then stab the four by four in there. But you're going to want a six You want it a little soupy. And then don't fill it all the way to the top so that all that displacement doesn't spill out. But yeah, just push it down in there. And once it's in there and you get it where you want it, top it off dirt, pack it, you're good to go. Walk away. Yep. So the other thing I see here are the post tops are all over the place. While you're setting your post, go ahead and put a mark on your post uh, for your string line. And use your string line to set your height. So yes. that you don't have to come back and then cut all those posts off that you just set. Let's let's one and done this. Yeah. So it set everything to height, what he said. You know, if you're building a six foot tall fence, I'm assuming this is six foot tall. So you're going to want the post exactly six feet out of the ground or maybe just a touch more to allow for clearance underneath the fence. Then put a mark at six feet or depending on how far your string is above the ground and account for that. And, and set your string two, four, six inches up off the ground. Do the math. Put a mark on the post at that where it should line up with the string line and drop the post in. Yeah, save yourself all this extra work. Okay, the plan is we are going to use a laser to make sure that all of our posts are level with the top of our concrete block fence over here. Problem is the laser doesn't show up too great outside, so... The laser also outside. only shoots plumb. Unless you have a fancy sloped laser. It's level. Plum. Plum. It's level. Is it level? Yes, it shoots level. She's talking about the top of the fence. How are you confused about this? I'm thinking a laser where you set it down and it shoots level across every direction. Yeah, but you just said plumb. Level isn't plumb. No, level is not plumb. Okay, what is level? Plumb is vertical, level is horizontal. <laughs> Same freaking thing. It depends no. on which way the freaking bubbles turn. No. Okay, level. <sighs> You're going to get us in so much trouble not knowing the difference between level and plumb. Yeah, hello. Uh, yeah, all the critics are saying that, yeah, it's definitely level. It's definitely, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> we were able to mark the laser line across all 20 posts just before the sunset. And then the next morning, we used a square to make our markings a little bit more clear. At this point, Bryce used a circular saw with the blade at full depth to cut around the post. So I say don't waste that post. Front. Send it in the ground. Put it in the ground. You bought it. You paid for it. Don't waste it. Put, Put it, it in, in the, the ground. ground. They make a tool for doing this easier too. If you really are just dead set on not setting your post to height, there's a tool that can help you with this. Make sure that you get the perfect cut every time. We'll drop a link down below for that tool. With the posts all trimmed to their correct height, it was time for me to apply stain. We like the look of black steel fence posts, so I chose an opaque deck stain in the color charcoal by Bear. Outdoor product. I like black steel fence posts too, because they're steel. Yeah, she said it. A black, she likes the look of black steel posts. I would have bought black steel posts. We applied to a deck, provide both color and moisture protection in one product. And in my experience, hold up much better than paint over time. I applied two coats of the deck stain using my Graco cordless airless sprayer. Hey guys, we hope you guys are enjoying today's video. We wanted to drop in and tell you a thing or two about today's sponsor, Wood Defender. We love these guys. They have a great product. Wood Defender is oil-based. So therefore, you're not gonna have any chipping, cracking, or flaking of your fence stain. Wood Defender is self-leveling. If you cover your fence to the point of saturation, you're not gonna be able to see a heavier spot and a lighter spot. Also, if you start and stop, you're not gonna see any stitch lines. You are gonna have some drips, you're gonna have some runs, but you're not gonna see them because it's self-leveling. I don't wanna go out there with a paintbrush and stain my fence. No, no, you're thinking the wrong thing. Wood Defender is so easy to apply. Pick up a simple weed sprayer and away you go, spraying down your fence. Now what about overspray? Is that difficult to clean off? Wood Defender is super easy to clean up off of non-porous surfaces. Just take a dry rag, maybe some dish soap and water, and wipe it right off. On porous surfaces, it takes just a little extra prep work with either a drop cloth, some dish soap, and some water. Wood Defender has been family owned since 1952, and they have amazing customer service to match. Wood Defender has dealers in every state who can ship anywhere just like us. Make sure and see the link below. And now back to the video. Rough sawn lumber, as opposed to the smooth milled lumber like you typically find at Home Depot, is a much better material for outdoor use, especially if you're going to apply a finish to it. Do you think that, what do you think that material is? Is that cedar? 
It, I I don't know. It's what hard to that. if it's cedar, then I, I think it's be been fine. dried a little bit. But if again, that's it should be pine. Pine. If it's an untreated pine, you'll get some life out of it because she's in a dry, arid climate. But I wouldn't try this in anywhere wet. No. Pine in a dry, arid climate with the stain on it's probably going to last a very long time. Again, it's only the post I'm really super concerned about. If this is pine in Florida and it's untreated, then it would never last at all. Our preference would also be rough sawn lumber yeah, like for the rough. fencing. It, it it turns out great. Soaks up the a lot of times stain better too. The, yeah, it soaks up the stain better. It seems like you get a little better strength out of the material too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and as you guys may well know, our preference for stain is going to be the Wood Defender product that's specifically engineered for wood fences and decks. 100%. So. After letting the boards dry for a couple of days, it's time to start attaching them to the fence posts. The boards we used were 16 feet long, which is wide enough to cover two panels, but we needed to start with one smaller 8-foot panel against the fence. If we attached all 8-foot boards on that smaller panel, we would end up with perfectly vertical seams every 16 feet along the fence, which could be potential weak spots. Instead, we decided to stagger the 16-foot boards I agree with and then fill the gaps with a few more 8-foot boards, creating staggered and ultimately stronger seams. I, used I like the way she's spacing her boards. One inch tall spacer blocks. Occasionally, we would have a board that was a little twisted from sitting outside, which we were able to pull into place using a heavy duty clamp before screwing it to the post. It took us about a day and a half to install 121 slats. Yeah, I was noticing too that some of the boards are maybe a little curved and crooked and stuff. So if you use a spacer, you can actually pull some of that out as you attach them. All the two by six fence slats are up. And then on the face where we have these ugly seams where the boards butt together, we want to cover that up and make it look a little bit cleaner. So we have one by four fence pickets. They're the same width as the four by four posts behind them. And so we've painted them black. We are going to place them in front of the horizontal pickets. Um, and screw them into the posts behind. Did you see that? Drywall screws. Yeah, those look like drywall screws. So I can't recommend using drywall screws. I would definitely go with stainless, especially if this is cedar. Drywall screws are extremely brittle. They'll break. Yeah, not very good for screwing lumber, especially outdoors. Yeah, it's, but you get wood that swells with the temperature changes and moisture changes, and that you can break those screws off, not to mention they could leave streaks. Um, there's just not a great option for, for doing this. So I re- definitely recommend stainless steel screws, which we sell a ton of in our store. Um, you can get those linked down below. I agree with the trim, though. Not just the trim, but bec- she went with the 4-inch trim just to match the, the, the size of the post there. Ready to see how our modern horizontal fence turned out? The only other thing I would say, and maybe you're seeing it too, I recommend to stay in between. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. I can already see the boards kind of weevil wobbling in mm-hmm. the middle. So Doing a little basket weave yeah, on your own. And so if you put a middle vertical behind that and screw or nail that in, um, that'll keep all your boards straight so they don't twist against each other and it'll just look better in the long run. And it can also help keep them from warping up and down over time as well. So it's just mm-hmm. a good idea to put a middle vertical. We don't like to exceed four feet on support on any type of horizontal fence. Yeah, I can see some of those boards. That one. Really yeah, really bad. There's a couple. Also, we're still able to see if somebody who shouldn't be is walking around in the back. I think what she's help. saying is you can still fit a rifle barrel between those slots. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> kind of duck blind situation. Man, I just, she's talking about these high wind areas and I just feel terrible because this is going to be a problem. That dried wood and the wind that one inch gap is not going to make the difference that you think it's going to make. No, it's not that big of a difference. Um, very minimal. Because you look at wind flow patterns and stuff like that, and it's going to allow a little bit through, but the pressure that's going to be on that fence, if you get a direct crosswind to that fence, is going to be immense. And you're doing that to a dry wood that's now firmly supported in the ground. And I'm not only worried about rotting, but I'm worried about snapping the posts off, which if it's super dry wood and it's not a super strong wood, this can, this can happen. If, you, if you're watching this channel, I would be curious if this fence ever fails. I would like to know how long it lasts because I'm genuinely curious about this particular situation. This is the type of situation that I want to take an airboat to and blow on it just to see what happens. Because this is nice dry wood, it's untreated, and then maybe let it sit for a couple of years and see what happens. Because I've seen this happen here in Wyoming where we have very similar conditions. The steel, the steel is worth the extra cost. That's, that's my number one biggest takeaway. The fence looks great. Everything else is great, but... Dang it, I wish you had put steel on the ground. We use Postmasters for this horizontal fence all the time. 
Maybe shrink up your spacing from eight foot to six foot if you're really worried, just to give you some extra stability, but that's what these posts are engineered and designed for. Would have loved to see some post monsters driven into the ground even. Yes. That ground looked like it oh, was yeah. really conducive, it. conducive to driving conditions. So you could have drove those post masters in there three, three and a half feet and not even dug a hole. And you know what? <laughs> if you drive those posts, you're saving all the work of the concrete. So you spend a little bit more on the product, but you got an engineered product that's not going to fail in the wind now. And you saved all the labor and expense of putting that concrete in the ground and digging that hole and cleaning up all that dirt that's in your gravel. So, man, so many benefits. That's prime example. Perfect place to use a Postmaster post. And then at the end, you just cover up the post and never see it again. Yep. Do you think you'd ever try building a wood fence yourself? Let me know in the comment section. And as always, I think I, I, think think I, I would. did. I think I did. I think I would. So what do you think, guys? Is this this thumbs up, thumbs down? Thumbs yeah. up on the horizontal and the overall appearance. Thumbs down. The fence is going to fail. The quality and the craftsmanship of this, I would say, is mostly on point. So I'm going to give it a thumbs up. It doesn't get two thumbs up. The only reason, the only reason that I'm not giving you a total thumbs up with 100% conviction is that I want to see steel in the ground, not the not the untreated wood that I know is going to fail. Or at least treated or cedar or redwood. One of those. The other, if you had to do wood. The other big thing I would do is that middle, that middle stay. So those are the two things that I would improve upon. Hole depth, post type, and middle stay. If, if you did those three things, it would be 100% conviction. I have a hard time giving a solid thumbs up to something that I know is going to fail. I'm like, eh, it's right there. It's right there. It's Do you think the fence is still standing? I don't know. How long, how long ago is this video? Do we know? Five, Five months. months. Yeah, it's still it's still probably still okay, yeah. In the years. very beginning of that video, when they were, after they dug the holes, there was one bag of concrete per every hole. Do you think that there was more concrete added to every hole, or do you think... I. Did you see that? Mm, that's an eight-inch hole. There's not gonna. You can't put. It's, eight it's inch only by two, two foot, foot deep. We were in another place where we kind of skimped. Just drive. Freaking send them. Go to Pound Town. Just drive those things all the way in there and be done with it. So if there's ever anything that you should overspend on, it is definitely your post footing and your post. Yeah. I'm gonna ask Nick to insert a video of us pulling a postmaster that was driven into the ground right here, just so you, all you haters can see just that this works. This last night. Yeah, last night. We're going to insert that right Breaking now. Breaking news. For all the people that think that Driven... Hello. Again? They're saying it's never going to work in their area. Oh, of course. There's going to be that crowd that's just never going to believe anything we say and, and tell us how terrible we are. I think we put this one to bed. Good build for longevity. Have some concerns. What do you think? Tell us what you think. If you want to see how we build horizontal cedar fence, check out this video right over here, right over Alan's face. Until next time, I'm Mark with SWI. I'm Dan with SWI. I'm Alan with SWI. We hope you have a good dang day. Oh! Thief.